Those who don't know the Bible do think that the scriptures demean women, but that couldn't be further from the truth. There are some great religions that treat women like they're cattle or dogs that have to walk behind them, but not the Bible. If you read Proverbs 31, you'll see God exalts women to a great position of honor. The scriptures say, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. There is no greater honor and no greater love than to love a woman as Christ loved the church. Still, there are some that believe the Bible treats women as though they're objects of men's pleasure, but they're wrong. Take, for instance, this person's comment. From what I've seen in the Bible, women are little more than objects, something to be taken from the spoils of war. If a man rapes a woman, she is forced to marry her rapist. So let's look at this as an atheist passionately brings up the subject. Now maybe there is a God. If there is, there isn't the one, it's not the one that was written by some guy 3,000, 5,000 years ago in some old book that's made up a fairy tale. You can open it up and it'll have things about God promoting raping women. In fact, God commanded, God commanded genocide of people multiple times in the Bible. You can read it. It's What's in your there. name? My name's Andre. Andre, Andre, Andre. Pleasure. Andre, where did God command people to rape it? I've been reading the Bible okay. every day for 46 sure. years. I've never found any Bible verse. Great, I'm gonna pull it up for you right God now. God commanded people to rape. I'm gonna okay? pull it up for you. Yes, I will. Okay. Uh, Andre? Yes, sir. So, Andre, while you're doing that, I'll just talk to Brennan. Yes. So, today, get right with God. Not soon, because you could die between now and soon. Okay. Examine my motives. Why am I talking to you like this? It's because I love you. I care about you, okay? Right. That's the only reason. Right. And I want to give you this. Five dollars, not because you earn it, because you're not a good person, but because I love you and I care about you and I want to express it. And that's how God gives everlasting life. We can't earn it by being religious. Now, my friend here is probably an atheist. Are you Absolutely atheist? Absolutely, I am. Now, let me let me just. Are you yeah. going to talk to me or run away? I'll do. I'll stay as long as you'd like. I would like you to stay for two or three days. So just stay there. Sure. Okay? Mm -hmm. Andre. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you for having the courage right. and convictions. Oh, right. Thank you. I appreciate. I appreciate you in, no in engaging in civil discourse. Yeah. <laughs> so I've never found any Bible verse. Great. I'm going to pull it up for you right God now. God commanded people to rape. I'm going to okay? pull it up for you. saying that there are specific texts, religious texts, that condone evil actions. For instance, in the Bible it says that if you rape a woman, you're allowed to marry her. You can actually force your, your victim, you can rape them, and then force a marriage upon that person and take that person as your wife. How evil is that? Now I'd like to answer that question, but you've got to give me one minute to answer sure. without butting in. Here's the verse that's so often cited by atheists to say that a raped woman had to marry the rapist. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife. Notice the words, and they be found. To bring context to this verse, three verses previous to it, it says that if a man rapes a woman, he was to be put to death. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. Unbelievably, in the light of the previous verses saying that a rapist was to be put to death, a number of modern translations interpret lay hold on her as rape. So for those who can figure out that a dead man can't marry the woman he raped, coupled with the fact that the verse says, if they be found, implying they were both guilty, this verse obviously refers to consensual sex. It's similar to what we nowadays call a shotgun wedding. They had to get married. It is consensual sex. You read it in the King James Version. Some modern versions assume there's rape, but it can't be because the previous verse says that, that for rape, you are put to death. Now let's go back to your atheism because I'm interested in it. I asked you why you're an atheist. Do you as an atheist believe the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything, which is what atheism is? It's a, that, that is a very, very, um, what's the word? You're, you're boiling a very complex argument into something simple that can't be explained that way. It's really not fair. So, I mean, here's the thing is that, I'll be honest with you, like there is, I, I personally am not an expert on uh, the creation of the universe. I, I, Do you as an atheist believe the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything, which is what atheism is? Listen to him flounder when confronted with what he believes. It's a, that, that is a very, very, um, 
what's the word? You're, you're boiling a very complex argument into something simple that can't be explained that way. It's really not fair. So, I mean, here's the thing is that, I'll be honest with you, like there is, I, I personally am not an expert on uh, the creation of the universe. I... An atheist believes the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything. It's a form of insanity. Not an expert on uh, the creation of the universe. I, I understand. You can't use from... that phrase as an atheist. What? Creation of the universe. That that denotes a what creator. I, whether or not there was one. Whether or not there was okay, a creation. So whether you... or not everything's existed in time. Did you hear that? He said whether or not there was a creation, or whether or not everything existed in time. In other words, everything could be eternal, and therefore didn't need a creator. But that's scientifically impossible because of the second law of thermodynamics. Everything in time runs down, it wears out. In 10 billion years, this earth will have turned into dust. Therefore, if the earth was eternal, it would have turned to dust billions of years ago. So that's not an option. I'm gonna let you continue with your argument. We know there's a creator because there's a creation. Creation cannot make itself. Nature could not create itself, I'll tell you why. For nature to make itself, it would have to be pre-existent to make itself before it made itself, which is scientifically ludicrous. And yes, you're right. Maybe right now we don't have all of the answers, but just to say that because we don't have the answer, we're gonna to go to the most next, uh, the, the easy way, the easy answer, is just not a sound way to live your life. It's, to, it's, it's a cop-out. To yeah. say there was a builder yeah. is not a simplistic argument. It's common sense. A painter is not a simplistic element. It's common sense. We understand sense. buildings and architecture. We have science that, that is peer reviewed by other humans to understand how these things are created. Earlier on, you said you were a Christian. Is that right? I was, yeah. So you knew the Lord? Yes. So he exists? No. So you didn't know the Lord? I, I thought I did. So you were deceived? Yes, I was deceived. So you weren't a Christian, you were deceived like yes. many people. I want to change the dynamic just a little bit, okay? Yeah, please. I want to address your conscience. Please. Is that okay? Yeah, I'd love to. Do you think you're a good person? I do. I try to do good by other people. Here now is where the rubber meets the road. I'm about to confront him with God's law. That is the Ten Commandments. Romans 8 verse 7 says the law is the point of contention. That is, it brings offense. The mind of the flesh is actively hostile to God. It does not submit itself to God's law since it cannot. Sinful men don't like God telling them what to do morally. The same thing happens when the law approaches a criminal. He'll either try and shoot his way out, or he'll surrender. So it is with a sinner. He'll either become angry and try and cover his sins, or he'll surrender by admitting them. Okay, now how many lies have you told in your life? A lie. You ever stolen something? Yes. So you're a lying thief? No. Just because one person does one bad thing does not mean that that person is characterized by the single bad action that they've done. And this is my f***ing problem with Christianity. People try and put people in boxes based on one bad thing that they've ever done. And they try and hold that over your head for your ever and ever, for the rest of your life. Let me tell you, you can do a bad thing and you can be redeemed. Can you not? Can you not? Answer my question. Can you do a bad thing and be redeemed? Then how dare you call me a liar? How dare you call me a thief for lying one time and stealing one time? Okay, now how many lies have you told in your life? A lot. It's okay. Okay. Yes. I asked you if you had lied and you said many times. Yes, I have. How do you define a liar? A liar is somebody who lies intentionally to inflict somebody repeatedly. Now, have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. Okay, that's by, by the Christian By the Christian standard, yes, I have. It's a Judeo. Again, I don't believe in taking God's name in vain because, like I said, I don't, I don't adhere to there being, even being a God. And so if somebody says, that doesn't offend me personally, while it might offend you because of what you believe. It doesn't offend me. Okay. Okay, but you've got to realize this. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. You that can is true. You violate a law. That is true. And you can say to the judge, that doesn't concern me, I don't believe in it. It's yeah. the same with God's law. It's unlawful to give away other people's money. But I didn't know it wasn't mine. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Fourth question. Yes, sir. Jesus said if you look at a woman and lust for her, yeah. you commit adultery with her in your heart. That's absurd. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Oh, absolutely. You've admitted to me you're a liar. No, you're mischaracterizing me. Don't do that. Don't say that I'm a liar because I've lied. I that is disgusting. It's despicable. I Don't do that. I haven't finished the sentence. It's honestly atrocious that you would do that. Let me finish it. 
Okay? I'm not judging you. Try your self-control and hear me Have out. you done drugs? You're a drug addict. It's just, it's ridiculous. No, it's not. You rape one woman, you're a rapist. Murder one person, you're a murderer. Tell one lie, you're a liar. Steal one thing, you're a thief. I'm not judging you, but by your own admission, you're a lying, thieving, blessed, this adulterate heart. You're going to face God on Judgment Day whether you believe him or not. If God judges you by the Ten Commandments, we looked at four of them, on Judgment Day, you're going to be innocent or guilty. Innocent. Why? Because I believe that I've done the things that are right by my fellow humans, and if there's any God who feels otherwise, then that God doesn't exist because that's not a just God. You want a just God? Yes, I want a just God. Someone who punishes murderers? Somebody who, who, who commands a group of Jews to commit genocide against Syrians? Okay, let me ask you a question. That's not justice. I want to ask you a question. I'd like you to think before you answer. Okay. Did that happen? Yes. So God exists and he commanded the Jews no. to commit... So it didn't happen. It did happen. So your argument is fallacious. No. We can go back to the character of God. You want a just God? He's going to punish murderers, rapists, but it's he's so the thorough. God, it's the people who believe that there is a God that's the problem. Let me follow your logic, okay? You ask for a just God. Let me explain to you what a just God will do. Because the Bible reveals God as being just and holy. He is going to punish Hitler, murderers, rapists, but he's so just and thorough, he's going to punish thieves and liars and fornicators and donors, blasphemers. He's going to punish them wherever it's found. What? Unless they say they're sorry to Jesus? No. That's ridiculous. No. Not at That's all. ridiculous. No. It's insane. When, so if Hitler came up on his deathbed and said, I accept Jesus into my heart, please God forgive me, all of a sudden he's absolved of all the that he's done? That's insanity. And that's what you guys believe, and that's ridiculous. And take that person as your wife. How evil is that? An atheist can't call anything good or evil because he has no objective moral standard by which to make that judgment. The Bible does tell us that God told Joshua to kill all the Canaanites. He did kill every man, woman, and child except for Noah and his family in the Great Flood. He killed a man in the Old Testament because he didn't like what he did sexually. And in the New Testament, he killed a husband and a wife because they told one lie. Most seem to forget that he also proclaimed the death sentence upon the whole of the human race. The scriptures say, Behold the goodness and severity of God. Even though he's just and holy, he's also rich in mercy to all that call upon him offering eternal life in the gospel. It certainly is a delusion of grandeur when a foul-mouthed, angry, blasphemous, self-righteous sinner stands in moral judgment over Almighty God. Okay, you want a just God? He is just, but the Bible says He's rich in mercy and He provided a Savior. God became a human being and suffered and died on the cross to take the punishment for the sin of the world. What you have to do is something you failed to do when you were younger. You need to repent and trust alone in Jesus. Don't accept Jesus. Don't ask Jesus into your heart. They're modern, they're modern phraseologies we use that create false converts. You need to repent of your sins and trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. The minute you do that, you'll come out of darkness into light. You'll be forgiven all those sins, those secret sins you've committed. And God will let you live forever because he's the lover of your soul. You may think you came here of your own volition. God brought you here today so you can hear another version of what you thought you believed. So you can hear how God can forgive you. He knows you by name and knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows the thoughts of your heart and still wants to give you mercy rather than justice. And I don't know if you know this, but I love you, I care about you, and I don't I want you to end up in you hell. Care about you well. and in, in closing, I just want to make a very, regardless of what you hear from anybody, regardless of what anybody okay. tells you, remind I want everyone here to remember that people say all sorts of stuff and it's on each person individually to take that responsibility and use their brain and think for yourself. People start spouting stuff about radio waves controlling our heads. Does that mean you're going to wear a tinfoil hat? I don't know. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But what you need to do is you need to decide for yourself what makes sense. Read, talk to people, talk to people on both sides of the aisle and make that decision for yourself. Not because somebody's trying to scare you or tell you that if you don't, some bad things are going to happen to you, but because you've researched it, because you've been involved in the conversation and because you've made the decision that you feel is best for you and those around you. Thank you, let's give a great big hand. Yeah. Thank you so much. Pleasure. The Evidence Study Bible will give you everything you've ever wanted to know about subjects such as the theory of evolution, as well as valuable information about the cults and different religions, atheism, and biblical archaeology. It also contains hundreds of quality quotes, fascinating articles, amazing scientific facts in the Bible, and so much more. It even includes answers to 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith. 
The Evidence Study Bible will thoroughly enrich your trust in God and in His precious Word. Get yours at livingwaters.com.